Vice President elect Kashim Shatima has intervened in the crisis rocking the All Progressives Congress over the leadership of the impending 10th National Assembly. At a meeting with members of the 10th Assembly Joint Task Force, Shatima says the incoming administration's focus remains stabilizing the country and ensuring in inclusivity of all regions. Our rice correspondent, Tunji Olani Pekun, filed this report. Of the 10th Assembly Joint Task file into the residence of the Vice President-elect. The meeting is aimed at building support for Tajuddin Abbas, who is the preferred choice of the All Progressive Congress APC for the seat of the Speaker of the 10th House of Representatives, Abbas, and the preferred Deputy Speaker, Benjamin Kalu, thanked the party and the President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinumbu for finding them worthy. We decided to show that unifying the nation will inspire national loyalty from all corners of the nation. And you remember Southeast, and you said, granted, that before now, no Southeastern was in the presiding officer's position the last four years. But this time, irrespective of the number of votes that came from Southeast, the party considered cohesion and gave us this. We are grateful. We are very grateful to you, to Mr. President-elect, and to the party for finding us worthy of this end of leadership. And I want to assure you that we will not disappoint the party, we will not disappoint you, we will discharge our responsibilities with our most efficiency. Vice President-elect Kashim Shatima says the incoming administration is focused on ensuring the peace and stability of the country and will ensure that political offices are distributed to reflect every geopolitical region. Shetima says he will meet with other aspirants to discuss stepping down for the party's choice. Given the current circumstances we found ourselves in, the stability of the nation is much more important than all other considerations. The most incompetent the most corrupt Southern Christian is better than the most puritanical and competent Northern Muslim to be the President of the Senate of the General Republic of Nigeria. Yes. All other considerations have to be relegated to the background. Because we are talking of the stability of the nation. I met with Right Honorable Wase, the Deputy Speaker. Is someone who is pretty close to me. We'll continue the engagement so that we shall have a rank of free tense assembly. Well, that was Vice President elect Kasim, Kashim Shetima there, but now back to brass tacks. It's time to usher in our first guest, Ambassador Dr. Charles Otudo, seasoned brand strategist and group principal consultant. Astrat Brand Management Consultant. Good morning, Dr. Otudo. I'm, I'm honored to be here. I'm very honored to be here. Thank Welcome you. to the morning show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, it's a few days yes. to the inauguration of a new government in Nigeria. Um, a lot of people will think that it is politics hmm. that will be the subject matter. But for people like your good self, it will be how Nigeria is perceived. Hmm. Brand Nigeria, um, what will be the thing, in your opinion, that we will be projecting to the world? And do you think that a new brand for the country will emerge from May 29? Good governance, number one. Um, we would expect that uh, His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu would put in place good governance. He has a precedent. The, the beauty about his, him, his brand is that he has done a lot of work here in Lagos, and he has a lot of lieutenants that are renowned. So we expect that he will put in place a structure that will work. Okay. And it's not about him alone, it's about his decisions and the people around him. A lot of political brands make the mistake of assuming that they can do it all alone. He has done a wonderful job from Fashola to uh, 
let's forget Ambode, let's look at um, um, all these lieutenants. They are doing well. They've done well. They, in fact, the one that even surprises me is um, Ben Wabweze, who is an evil man, was um, SA budget, and is still SA budget in Abuja right now. Federal. For me, that tells a lot about a man that has been able to groom men. I hope for what he needs now is good governance and then positioning Nigeria as a state, as a, as a nation state that's well governed. That's number one. Good governance, right people. All right then. So let's. Uh, I think I'll just dig into a few different things oh, that. No. So, I mean, if we're looking at Nigeria, yeah. um, let's even, with everything that is happening, there's been this back and forth about full subsidy, right? Hmm. Uh, should, should the current administration start with that? Even though, like, it's prom you know, the, they promised that that's one of the things that they were going to do, hmm. but there's been this hold back. Uh, we have this $800 uh, million that has been borrowed hmm. for palliatives, and there's all this back and forth, mm -hmm. right? But well, I want to ask you, okay. when we look at the policies what strategies should the Nigerian government adopt to attract more direct investment and reduce Nigeria's dependence on oil? Now, this is 2023. A lot mm -hmm. of, you know, um, first world nations mm -hmm. are looking towards the future. And yeah. we should be too, especially with everything that is going on in the world. True. When it comes to that oil uh, mm. dependency, that brand that we're known mm -hmm. for, there are other things that Nigeria uh, Nigeria is known for. Mm. Why? How can we fully latch onto those things uh, 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 to, I guess, make Nigeria a better brand? Okay, let me start with uh, my advice: green energy, well subsidy. It's out, it's outdated. It's opaque. It's old school. Why are we still holding on to it? Since how many years from? the Jonathan Gulok era to this government, eight years, and then I think that Bola Tinubu should kill it. Um, we'll suffer a bit, but at the end of the day, Nigeria better. What we're looking at now should be the, the overall good of Nigeria. Green energy. The government should invest in green energy more. Green. Green is the future. Where you stop investing too much money on oil, go green, and then encourage the people to go, go um, for me, uh, you can use, um, what's it called? You don't have to use electricity anymore. Are you solar? Solar works, but government should invest more in green energy. And you talked about the uh, subsidy issue. If I was a president, I would kill this subsidy thing totally. It will suffer a bit. It's a very, very unpopular decision. But long term, it will solve a lot of problems. First of all, there's too much corruption involved in subsidy. You and I know that. Too many people are eating free from the subsidy issue for the past 20 years. Mm. They tried to, to stop it because of the big boys that control it, is not popular. Kill it, forget it, ban it. For invest, if, let's assume we're investing 200 billion on, on this. Transfer that money and invest it on green energy, if, a strategy for green energy. It will stop, first of all, you, you kill the, um, the um, the corruption, because you are keeping the money. Mm -hmm. And then you are investing it again. I hope, but my only hope is that that 200 billion, whatever we are investing, is not be, will not become another issue again of corruption. Mm -hmm. That means put in place structures that control that funding to green energy so that people now start investing. Solar. Okay. All right. Um, the, the gentleman that you referred to the other time, you so, know, was, okay. was actually Ben Akabwezi. You know, not Ben Akabwezi. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, you know, yes. So you Akabwezi. Can, yes. Yes. You know, it, it fantastic was, it was commercial man. in Lagos State and now. Fantastic you know. man. Um, okay. So you're looking at the antecedent of the 
president-elect mm -hmm. uh, playing a role mm -hmm. in, in, in the perception of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I know that when uh, President Obasanjo was in power, he initiated uh, a few things mm -hmm. that was targeted at rebranding Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, he, I think it was under him, and I, I, th I think this was great Dora nation, Shelley, something, something. A, a great nation, good people. Um, what kind of brand strategy do you think that the Tinubu administration should adopt? And do, do you think that that will work um, on the back of an election that was really, you know, fairly rancorous? Rancorous, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Uh, let, 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 me, let me step back a bit. If I was a president, I would put myself in his shoes. I will not make any attempt to rebrand the country at all. I would invest, first of all, in good governance. That in itself positions us. The right people with the right credentials, the right policies. And I will invest in five areas. Security housing, agriculture, um, um, tourism. But you see, tourism can never ever happen mm. without security. So let's kill, secu let's kill tourism. But I will invest in the first, the most critical area is security, security, housing, agriculture, and then Maybe medicals. Good. You are saying that uh, Tinubu should not invest in tourism? No. Because with the world security? Okay. Not, not immediately. I think it should focus more. The most critical areas, we are in a... No. You can't even travel between... I have a friend that was traveling, he was at... He was he's kidnapped. He's still in... He's still in... We can't find him. Still in Kaduna. Between Kaduna and Abuja. And he was in a bulletproof vehicle. There's a lot of crime in America. There's a lot of crime I know, in South everywhere. Africa. No, no, no. But then everywhere. tourists are going there. Yeah, yeah, I know. So can we focus on the key areas? Security. Security first. Why not America? That's a mistake we're making. We don't, I know, I, I, let me agree with you on one, on one thing. America's issues are different from ours. Yeah. We have a lot of lunatics all over in America. A lot of people are lonely. There are a lot of people that are loonies that do not talk to anybody. If I'm, if I'm lonely, I can call you. We talk to each other. People talk to each other in Nigeria. Americans don't talk to anybody. So there are cases, I, th I, I think that the case of Americans are a bit funny. How is a, a man just walking to a school and start open fire on youths? Kill a baby? No, no, no. You don't see that here now. And yeah, that falls back to their gun laws. You know, when no, no, let's leave the gun laws. Mm. Look at the mental state of the human being that will just walk into a school, a nursery school, and shoot a baby, a three-year-old child. No, no, no. It's not normal. So my point is, uh, the, the, the mere fact that you, the fear that anybody could get shot anywhere in America yes. um, does not stop tourists from going to America or, or people from mm -hmm. you know, going there to study. Uh, so I, I would have imagined that one of the Early wins. That Will be for tourism for Nigeria. If if you add <laughs> entertainment and sports entertainment. No, to let me it, come back. Let me because these I, are the soft powers. I agree. I believe that but the new no, government should. I would in, would prefer that we focus on good governance first. These are all tech soft issues that will be added later. If you don't have a right infrastructure, the humans, how would you run tourism when you don't have the right minister and the structure? The policies, visas at the airports, immigration, all, all those escalates, all the escalators, they are not working. There's no, I mean, you have to have the right people on ground to run the system. You seem to be giving an assessment of the last 80 years. As well. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Each time I go to the airport, it's amazing how it just, everything runs. Once you land, if I were land, see Nigeria, you just see lanterns. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about, I mean, you've highlighted good governance a couple of times. Okay. So what steps should the incoming administration take to enhance transparency and accountability in public administration, uh, promoting good hmm. governance practices hmm. that can rebuild the trust and confidence in Nigeria's uh, institutions? Oh, 
openness. I think that if you put in place the right people and as a leader you run a government that is transparent, there must be communication. So whoever must become, that's what I talk about, the right person, the right people in the right places. So the people put in place must communicate. A lot of times we don't even know what they are thinking. You have to be asking, okay, can we put in place the right people and the right policies so that they will consistently, even if it's only once every six months, tell us what you are, you are working on, how you are doing this, so that we don't have to be asking questions. Transparency and openness, simple. But first of all, put the right people in the right square pegs in square holes. Qualified, not the octogenarians that are tired. They should, in fact, they should be retired by now, be in their farms, managing their cows, not working, I'm sorry, I'm not mentioning names, not working in public spaces where they cannot even remember the policies they put in place. I'm the, sorry. The, the, the right. septuagenarians and the octogenarians All of them are them. allowed in America to still but, function. But maybe those ones take care, better care of themselves. I'm 52, I take a lot of vitamins. I remember everything. I'm sure you are. How old are you now? <laughs> I'm older than you. <laughs> no, I know. So, but, but they take care of themselves. Yeah. You have to take care of yourself and make sure that you put in place a team. If you appoint me now to any position, yeah. I will work with a team of seasoned people to guide, to help me, to deliver. Most of them don't want to work with anybody. They work alone. I know okay, them. Okay, Charles, let, let me come back to uh, the, the brand Nigeria issue mm. and what would define it. Okay. Uh, because you, you know, you, your focus, like Shaito said, seems to be on good governance. As if that, I'm holding uh, on to that. Uh, just, just hold on a bit. As if mm. that alone will sell the country. I'll give you an example. Just okay, a moment. Okay, okay. Um, uh, uh, America did better in terms of the economy. Doing to Trump. And Clinton. And Clinton. Yes. Drew no, Trump. no, no, Clinton. I, I'm, I'm using the Trump, okay. era. Trump era. But then in spite of the fact that the it economy was, was good, it was the, the perception man, the man was. of the man and the United States. You know, so I'm saying that if the incoming administration mm. does well mm -hmm. in good governance and managing the economy, remove subsidy and the things that you have mentioned, clean up the mm -hmm. forex issue and everything, mm -hmm. can, can the people totally remove how the president himself would be perceived from how the country would be perceived. Brand Nigeria, the brand equity of the man running the country uh, versus the brand equity that he's mm. supposed to bring to the, to the country. Okay, let me, do you realize that the most important factor in American politics now is Donald Trump? It's now Donald Trump, right? Um, yeah. Even more important than Biden, it's, it's, it's heavy. The president must invest in his personal branding. His personal brand is very important. His strategy and how he he's perceived personally. Yeah. Either aggressive, subtle, but he must be communicating his personal brand. So he must engage a brand communications firm that has knowledge of PR and brand management to manage him personally. Donald Trump engaged. There are three companies managing Donald Trump's personal brand. His son handles it. Plus the lawyer was, was indicted. Yeah. So our president, incoming president-elect, must also put in place a structure that manages his personal brand so that his actions, his utterances, how he dresses, mm -hmm. what he puts on is well articulated because all those soft issues come to bear with the confidence that we, we repose in him. How, how do you perceive him, Bola Metinobu, as a brand? Right now? Yeah. You want them to arrest me? <laughs> okay. You want to tell you? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I think that the, the Bola Tinubu's brand is very weak in terms of perception. He, too many negative stories come out. And his camp, all those videos of him stumbling, being held to climb. Those are things that should never be seen. You don't see... No, no, no. Trump is always looking 
aggressive. That's the position. Yeah, but we see the, the, uh, Biden, you know, stumbling and stuff. Too. Yes, but, but, okay, let me ask you. What's your position on Biden? <laughs> you asked the question. So what's the, your, your position on Biden? I think he's weak. Old and weak, but yeah. He, very weak, not just old and weak. But he is the current president of the United I know, but he's weak. He comes across as nation, weak but... and tired. Trump, I think Trump is older than Biden. No, Biden is older. Biden is but older. Trump comes across as still energetic. You got you now. I mean, we did see um, the president-elect, uh, he, he, he made a return back from Which one? Uh, France. Uh -huh. a, a few, and then he was... He, was, he, he looked ill and hearty. He, he took some vitamins. <laughs> I mean, we can't we can't confirm exactly what his medical uh, records are. Records maybe are, should, maybe maybe it's time for us to be open and be transparent. If you are a president of a country that is investing in you, which and that four years yeah. of our life, come open and tell us, I am healed and healthy. I've done A B C D. Our current president is somewhere in um, France for dentition or something. He has to delay. He's in the UK. If, 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 then can you, you are not even doing it in Nigeria. All the money we've invested in the Astro Rock Medical Center. Why are we not doing it here? These are negatives that are not right for perception of Nigerians like me and you. We should trust our own medicals. I had an issue with my, my better half. I sent you the message for two years. I had to make sure she went to Spain, Madrid. It's expensive. Why? But because, because I don't trust, not the, the machines, but the humans that manage the machines. Could that be why the president and the, and the president-elect do not no. also trust the... I don't know. I, I don't control these things. They are in, in power. If I was sick, I would not go to... A, I would go to Motayo or any of these local hospitals, but if I had a choice, I would go to... We have the best hospitals in Lagos. Last week, Jairus Yeah. The fantastic doctors. The vice president used one for his surgery and it yes. was, you know, successful. And it's okay. Why is that teeth? No, I know. For your dentition? Well, it sends now. You're talking about branding of the country yeah. and the perception. If you as a leader don't trust your own medical system, why should we? That's, those are soft issues that affect the perception of our a country. Would the, the Prime Minister of the UK come to Nigeria or go to India for medical treatment? I leave that hanging. Maybe India, because we know about their... Uh, their sorry, medical, sorry. The, the Prime Minister around. of the UK will go to India for treatment. Leave UK. Check. It's not possible. Okay, you've spoken about green <laughs> energy, right? And, okay, you know, green where, energy, yes. Yes, and where, where you know, talking about the actual investment in it. Hmm. How can the government prioritize sustainable development initiatives uh, uh, such as uh, renewable uh, energy adoptions, climate change hmm. mitigations, and responsible resource management? Because you've spoken about kind of taking that investment mm -hmm. in subsidy and being able to transfer it mm -hmm. to green energy so that it aligns with global environmental goals and, and probably laws, even yeah. attract uh, green investments yeah, from you know, uh, uh, international uh, bodies. Okay, let me take it from my experience when I launched the Calabar Energy City many years ago. One, <coughs> you have to have the policy in place. We don't have a policy. Let's go check the... Uh, the government should put in place if the, the, the laws, enabling laws that would encourage, one, guidance. It starts with guidance. Who and who should be involved? If government does not put in place those enabling laws, we're in trouble. So government should put in place the laws, the, um, the laws that enable investment. No, not just investment. They are enabled that guides the processes after that can we now go into execution or else it will not work mm -hmm. the policy must be in place and it goes through through the house of assembly formulation of the policy yeah. i'm very interested when i went to school of policy and politics and governance i learned the most important aspect of politics is rules and regulations and governance and economics half of 90%, sorry, 
of the rulers across Africa have no business running their governments. They've never run any businesses. Never. Check. Most of the, look around Africa, most, 90% of presidents across Africa have no businesses run, being in public, they're, being, they're, they're career they politicians. don't have, they are career politicians. Go and check. Can they even pay, they don't even have a business. All right, Charles, before, <laughs> before we let you go, because we have totally run out of time, no, okay. before we let you go, um, I, I know that you, 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 you were the face of the intern. Oh, uh, in, in those days, which one. was mooded, I think, after The Apprentice by yes, yes. Donald Trump. Donald Trump, um, after The Apprentice, of mm -hmm. course, you know, went on to become uh, the president. <laughs> you, after the intern, you've done so many things, you know, here and there, and then you went to school of politics. Mm. And Should we expect a Charles Sotudo politician at some point? After going to school, I wanted. I was interested in politics, but after going to school, uh, my I'm more interested in policies, reforms, prison reforms. For me, is very important. Um, immigration reforms, human rights. So I'm not. No, I have no plan. I'd rather be behind the scenes and manage brands, political brands, corporate brands. I will never ever go into politics. No, I'd rather just work behind the scenes and create never? presidents. Never. No, no, no. Unless I'm kidnapped and installed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Thank you so much, uh, Charles Otu, Dr. Charles uh, Otudo, for being here on The Morning Show. We appreciate your analysis. Not just mine.